All right, everybody, I'm pretty sure you might recognize the guy sitting next to me as Richie Sambora. You know, he played in that little band called Bon Jovi that Thank you might you. have heard oh, of a couple times, that little thing. Um, so glad that you're here. My pleasure. We're going to have some fun today. This is going to be Absolutely. great. Absolutely, yeah. We just did a sound check, and it's actually the first time that the, uh, the three of us had played together, except uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Juber, is actually my guitar teacher. Really? I study. I've been, I took up studying again. Yeah, he's my guitar teacher. Yeah, so it's a well, that's cool. a pretty cool connection. We like that. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, I'm a self-taught musician. so I That's what I was going to ask. Lot, there's a lot yes. of stuff that I pass by on the way. And uh, I had met Lawrence. I walked into a guitar shop and he was playing. Which kind of got your attention. He there. sounded like two guys at the same time. And I had to walk around <laughs> and say, man, what are you doing? He says, hi, I'm Lawrence. I says, hi, I'm Richie. And I said, would you teach me you would you like oh, give me lessons awesome. on how to do that you know because I went completely by that whole kind of uh, methodology of having to play guitar like that so and uh, so we've been uh, he's been teaching me for the last five months so it's been a pleasure and I'm already uh, able to do what he's teaching me so really fun. that's pretty cool that's so now I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys yeah, together. Awesome. this is gonna be fantastic how old were you? you were very young when you started playing Right? Uh, not exactly, 13? you know, I, I, yeah, I started teaching myself when I was about 13 years old I, before that I played like accordion and uh, I, found oh out you, I found out you couldn't get any girls playing cool, <laughs> so I had to switch it. You point. play yeah. an extraordinary number of instruments. I mean, you even play played horns stuff. And, yeah, I and played piano trumpets and, and sax and, and bass and piano, and I played a lot, a lot of stuff. I taught myself how to basically play anything. I just have like an ear for music. Right now. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, who was your biggest influence? I've, I've read different names. I well, you know, you I think I was a blues-based guy to begin with, you know, so you got guys like Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Jeff yeah. Beck and Jimmy Page, the modern-day blues guys. And then I went back and visited Muddy Waters and B.B. King and all, the, all their influences. So, you know, you just keep on digging back into musical history and finding out. What Have you got to play with any of the guys that inspired you, like Clapton? Have you got oh, to play absolutely. Clapton was really? on my first solo album. He played on my first solo album. He's a friend of mine, you know, Jeff. And awesome. I know... I know Jimmy's a dear friend of mine, actually, uh, and uh, BB's a friend of mine. I did a PBS special with him about two years ago. That was just phenomenal. It was a big honor to play with him. So, you know, but it's like they think, you know, a guy from Bon Jovi does he really have like blues chops? Mm-hmm. And know, you showed him, didn't the, you? Yeah, that's the way. That's basically where I come from. You know, we like so, those surprises. And that, when I when I that's the thing when I met with Lawrence, um, Lawrence is just a genius and uh, you know an unbelievable master at. Um, finger style and alternate tunings and stuff like that, which is stuff that I didn't know. So I just decided to delve into that. And Tommy Emanuel that's playing mm -hmm. here is just terrifying. <laughs> he, he is so good. At, so and really, Tommy is just terrifying, <laughs> man. He's a musical whiz, man. Yeah, so it's like, it's a, you know, I think the interesting thing about me showing up at a thing like this is because, you know, those guys, they play guitar for a completely different kind of concept of playing guitar. For me, I, I, I basically play guitar to actually accompany my writing. Yes. As a songwriting a lot. And these guys are songwriters in their own right, but they're really, they, they're just accompanying themselves, you know. It's, a, it's a really, really interesting. So it's a lot of fun. Now, you've had so much experience traveling around the world, Bon Jovi craziness and all of that, and, and oh, your solo performances. Stuff. Yeah, that like good stuff. Fantastic. All that rock and roll, just another day. A lot of that stuff going on here today. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We, I don't know, we may have some panties and women throwing themselves at you, but it'll you? be... I, I, if, <laughs> sure, just let me know when and... No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm off limits. I'm married. Damn. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> darn it. Missed that opportunity. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to find out, what is... Is there a, a moment that you remember as being like such an incredible moment that you had on stage that just stuck with you? It was a real... I mean, I'm sure there's you know, plenty of I've them. I've been lucky enough uh, in my life to have many, many pivotal moments. I think that, you know, I mean, anytime you walk out in front of a stadium, I, and, and our tours have been stadium tours yeah. where you walk out in front of at least, you know, 50 or 80,000 people and stuff like that. I mean, I did that on a nightly basis for two months uh, over the last tour in Europe. Our last tour was 18 and a half months in 50 countries. So, I mean, it's a... And very you know, successful. First, yeah, one of the biggest tours in the world. I mean, for the first year of it, it was the biggest tour in the world. And then we only did another six and a half months and we came in second at the next year. So we did pretty well. You for a bunch it. of old guys who've been around for a while. You know, it, it worked out pretty good. But uh, I think anytime you walk out in front of that kind of audience and you're able to actually play the songs that you like wrote in your bedroom with an acoustic guitar and it gets to all those millions and millions of people. I mean, that's a special moment. I think that... Um, you know, your first number one song as a songwriter is a very special yeah. moment. I think that was, a, you know, back in 1986. Uh, <laughs> 
I was in Iowa. <laughs> Swear to God, I was in Iowa. Really? And I walked out on stage and they said, you just got a, your first number one record. And that was, wow. that was something that you always remember. Yeah, that's got to be pretty incredible. Yeah. So uh, the venue today is much smaller than 80,000. Very intimate. Yeah, uh, and harder. Very intimate. You know, and I mean, harder. It's Why? actually harder when Why? somebody's like right next to you, like you're next to me and you're sitting there like watching me, watching my fingers. Right. Do it. It's a right. little bit harder. But you know what? It's not because I'm sitting next to two masters uh, where I, I, I feel like, you know, I'm junior today. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm Richie Jr. today, so it's, it's, it's like I, the pressure's off me, really. There you go. The, you know. the, the tie that you have, the connection that you have to the Let Us In and Women in, in Cancer Fund, mm -hmm. explain a little bit to us. I know that your father died of cancer, so you, you have firsthand. Well, you know, you know when, you, when you hear the word cancer, you think, I mean, everybody, I mean, in every family all across the world has been touched by cancer in some mm -hmm. way, shape, or form. And usually not in a good way, obviously. You know, so, I mean, for me, it's an important thing. So anytime I get asked to do anything for cancer and any, any, anything to do with children, uh, right before Christmas, I went and I did the uh, Joe DiMaggio Children Hospital and raised a lot of money for the Boys and Girls Club down in Florida. Um, uh, I did a thing for uh, Sloan Kettering in New York where we put three hospice units on the streets in New York a few years ago. I raised about a million bucks. I did a show in New York at the Hammerstein Ballroom. So I'm pretty much involved in uh, yeah. those kind of things. Anything to do with, uh, um, you know, people that are in need because of sickness. And uh, also this is kind of close to my heart because I feel like, you know, women are the heart of the family, of any family. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a family kind of guy and uh, so to, Anything to help women and the cancer thing, obviously a connection is due to my family, so you know, that's why I show up with her. You have a daughter. I 14. Do have a daughter. Is she fourteen now? Yeah, she's gorgeous and she's she is gorgeous. Now. And yeah. um, there's something going on with her. She's got um, some acting stuff coming that's up. That's right, yeah, she's a movie star. Pretty soon yeah, they're gonna be saying, right. Hey, you're Ava Sambora's dad. You know, that's what that's what's what, that's what's it's right around the corner, man. I'm How do you feel you. about that? Are you are you? I, you know, about that? hey look, it's a scary business. Yeah. As we all know. Um, but you know, anytime a child has a uh, passion for something, uh, which she truly does, mm -hmm. and you know, she's obviously good at it. And she, I mean, she went on her first audition and got like a movie with Judd Apatow and Megan yep. Fox and Albert Brooks. Right. I mean no small stuff. Right off the yeah. bat, you know. Very so nice. she's a natural at it. She actually <laughs> has the talent and um, so I support her in her endeavors and this and passion. I just said, hey, look, you got to do it right. We got her a great agent and got her an acting coach. And she went in and I said to the coach, because I don't know, she's my daughter. So, of course, I think, you she's, think she's great. Yeah, I think she's fantastic. So I'm really, you know, I can't really tell my perspective was off. But uh, I said to the coach, I said, she got it. She ain't got it. Coach said she got, got it. it. And I was like, all right, then. Rats, you know, are. that's all I need, you know. <laughs> and but, we're off. Uh, so here we go, right, you know. <laughs> get into the acting stuff. so but she's actively involved and I'm I'm a stage mom I take her to all the auditions and sit there with all the other mothers yeah <laughs> so <it's kinda> interesting. <laughs> well yeah you're, you're you're right in the depths of it so I, I appreciate that yeah no it's good I'm glad for her and she's a great kid and uh, you know she's uh, you know she's ha she has the celebrity parents and the ups and downs of us and yeah what we've been through true. so she's she's uh, she's, she's an adult in her own right yeah exactly you know so she's handling it well what's your favorite Paul McCartney song to play me favorite Paul song let's yes, see what is your favorite Paul god, song god there's so many of them so I, you know Blackbird on acoustic is always great yes you know I just seen a face on acoustic is always great I mean I mean this I mean Paul just has such a multitude of songs. I mean, God, you could just keep rattling them off. Hey Jude, you know. <laughs> God almighty. I mean, well, we're really excited that we get to songs. listen to you guys play some of his music today and get to learn from you as well. Yeah, so, we're going to have a good time. Thanks for sitting with us. And in a matter of moments, we are going to experience all three of these guys together playing. So don't go away. Pleasure.